but we will confess our sins today. And I know each and every one will receive a special grace of forgiveness. So let's begin with an examination of conscience. Let's take a few moments. I want you to think in prayer about what sins you want to confess to the Lord today. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless it. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, let me start the video by thanking you for taking the time to be here with us, and hopefully you'll be edified with what we've put together for you here. Anyway, for this video, I'd like to share something with you from the exorcist Father Forda. After God created the angels, he tested their fidelity to him before admitting them to the beatific vision, the sight of his very essence. For purely spiritual beings, this seeing of God's essence would be a purely intellectual vision. Some angels obeyed the divine test, others did not. Those who disobeyed were irreversibly transformed into demons and cast out of heaven. It may seem surprising that some angels would choose to hate God, but we need to understand that those who rebelled saw God as the oppressor of their freedom. Hate was born as their wills resisted the call of God and held fast to the decision to leave the Father's house. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And so, how can purely spiritual beings fight among themselves? What weapons do they use? Angels or spirits? so their battles must be purely intellectual. The only weapons that they can use are intellectual arguments. The angels gave reasons to the rebels for why they should return to obedience to God. The rebellious angels countered with their reasons to support their position and spread their rebellion among the faithful angels. In this epic angelic battle, some who were inclined to rebel returned to obedience, while some of the faithful angels were seduced by the evil arguments of the rebels. In art, Demons are depicted as deformed and grotesque beings. This would seem appropriate given that demons have definitively decided on a destiny far from God. The interior loneliness in which they find themselves forever and their envy of the faithful who enjoy the beatific vision continually bring them face to face with their sins. They hate God themselves and all those who seek to serve God. But not all suffer the same pains. Some angels were deformed more than others in the battle. Those who were more deformed suffer more the least deformed suffer less. The intellects of the rebellious angels were deformed and darkened by the very reasons they used to justify the rebellion of their wills against God. Their plight is similar to the moral debasement that humans can suffer through sin. We need to remember that we are composite creatures made up of soul and body. Aside from the sins that are proper to the body, the internal psychological process that leads a good person to end up in the mafia or as a guard in a concentration camp, or a terrorist is essentially the same as the sequence of acts of intellect, and will that led to the fall of the bad angels. Though we are body-soul composites, we as humans have only to look into our own interior life to understand how we can fall into sin. In this light, the sin of the angels becomes more easily understood. Well, I hope this is helpful for you. I've always enjoyed learning from Father Fortea, and hopefully you've learned something useful from what we've put together for you here. And if you're still here at this point in this video, I would like to share a short clip on confessing sins and to pray with Monsignor Rossetti for forgiveness. One of the most powerful things you can do to be liberated from evil is to confess your sins and to experience God's forgiveness. Now we Catholics have a special sacrament for that, the sacrament of reconciliation or confession. This won't be the sacrament today because you need to do that face to face with the priest. But we will confess our sins today, and I know each and every one will receive a special grace of forgiveness. So let's begin with an examination of conscience. Let's take a few moments. I want you to think in prayer about what sins you want to confess to the Lord today. Okay, repeat after me. In the holy name of Jesus, I confess the following sins. You can mention them quietly or out loud. Now we'll make an act of contrition. Repeat after me. Oh my God, I'm hardly sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins 
because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. But most of all, because I have offended thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love, I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. Now I'll say, may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. And with this, I'd like to share something from Monsignor Rossetti as well regarding one exorcism case. And according to him, one of their spiritual sensitives was present in an exorcism session. The demons were tormenting and choking a possessed person. She was stunned by the demons' complete lack of remorse or even an ounce of pity. In fact, they actually delighted in making the person suffer. This is an important insight for an exorcism team. We naturally expect people to show some compassion and to treat others with at least a modicum of respect, but unsurprisingly, demons do not. They will inflict the maximum suffering allowed, but fortunately, God greatly limits them. Still nevertheless, we all need to be careful when demons are manifesting and to expect the worst. At times, sadly, we humans also make others suffer, but we have a remedy. We can confess our sins. We can ask for forgiveness from God and from those we have harmed. We can do our best to provide restitution for any damage caused. Demons are beyond hope. In their absolute and irrevocable rejection of Jesus, they have rejected God's mercy. However, we humans are never beyond hope in this life, even in our last breath. In the end, it is only by God's mercy that any of us are saved. People often plead with Monsignor Rossetti to liberate them from demons. Some are thinking these exorcists have some special prayer that will cast out their evil spirits. But as Monsignor Rossetti puts it, he can see no greater prescription for liberation than a heartfelt confession and cleansing power of God's mercy. Well, that is all for the video this time. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for your continuous support of our channel, our works, and hopefully you'll always learn something useful for your own spiritual warfare with the videos we've put together for you. Anyway, for those of you who'd like to support our works, I left the link to our PayPal donation down in the description box below. And from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to say thank you so much in advance for your support and contribution. Well then, until the next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.